I'd like to welcome our web guest at USA Table Tennis Web. To the head of UberPong, David Lowe is joining us today to share a little bit about his passion in the sport of table tennis, his company, um, what they've done to help change the face of the sport to some extent. Um, David, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Sean. Very excited to, uh, to be on. Thanks for, uh, thanks for reaching out. No problem. Well, first of all, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? I know that um, you come from a great distance to the United States, from England. How did you get involved in the sport? So I would say a few years, I mean, I've always been in, always had a passion for table tennis, and I was a big tennis player when I, when I was a kid, so, but we, we get a lot of, we get a lot of rain in England, as you probably hear, <laughs> so, you know, a lot of the time we'd get rained off, and I'd come inside, and there, there would be a table tennis table there, so I, I, get, I got into the game, um, I guess through the, uh, the um, adverse British weather conditions, so... But, but one of the things that I always thought was that, that coming in, um, the sport just it just lacked that aesthetic appeal, that kind of aesthetic edge, and it was always kind of very you know the very poorly lit room and the, the dark table tennis table, and I think that was that was one of one of my early memories. Um, the, you know the game was great, but it just needed that a bit more colour and cool. Um, fast forward to how old was I when I started? About when I was about thirty. Um, I joined a London tech startup, and on the first day, I was t- taken on a tour of the, the offices, and they showed me a ping pong table, and I was like, right, I'm uh, already fans of, uh, of the company, um, but I didn't know anybody, and very, very quickly through table tennis, uh, you know, we, we kind of have stories to, to take back um, to the team after we'd, we'd had our battle on the table. Um, and, and that's really, I would say that's, that's where it really reignited my passion for the game. Um, and made me think, you know, this is, this is, this has definitely got, um, it's really got something. And, but, but that said, I thought that I could really improve the game. And I'd been waiting, I guess, having tried two startups uh, prior to that, I'd been waiting for, you know, the light bulb moment, if you like. And, and that was it. That was the moment when I saw the table. I saw the way it brought people together. Um, but I saw people playing, and everybody was playing with red and black paddles. And I thought, you know, everybody's got different personalities. Um, and I thought the one place that it, you know, that needs to come through is the ping pong paddle and sort of the table tennis racket, if you like, um, if you want to be um, in the formal expression. So, um, so yeah, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> Yeah, so, and then from there, I guess, um, another little kind of fast forward to the Kickstarter project. I remember hearing about yeah. it early on, and that turned out to be a pretty successful venture for you guys, huh? Yeah, you know, coming, coming across from England in February, when was it, February 2012, um, I was very, very excited to get into the, you know, the, the American web life and the, the entrepreneurial um I guess entrepreneurial entrepreneurial ecosystem of Austin, Texas, and so very quickly I was planning um, UberPong, but I had started a website called OriginOfCool.com, and I thought instead of just launching UberPong from scratch, I thought I'd use I'd leverage, if you like, the power of um, of Origin of Cool and that existing brand um, as a way of catapulting this to success, and it worked. And so from July to August 2012, we did a 30-day 30, yeah, 30 Kickstarter campaign and raised over $10,000 in, yeah, in, that, in, in that time period. And that was not just proof of concept, but it also you know, was the seed capital that allowed us to launch um, November last year. So, so yeah, and it was, just a, it was just an amazing experience because I got together with you know, a filmmaker, um, with models, with players that I, I'd met um, at, at, you know, bars with table tennis tables in Austin. And it was just a great, it was a great learning experience and, and how to, yeah, how to kind of rally people together, rally the crowd, um, first experience of crowdfunding. And, um, yeah, very, very pumped when we went through our, you know, the 10,000 target, yeah. And one thing I remember um, going through your website, David, was in a couple of the interviews that you're actually using local 
Austin artists to come up with some of the designs on the paddles. That's right. So with Origin of Cool, I had I had noticed a lot of um, a lot of graphic designers and contacted them to be to be on the blog. And moving across to Austin, I thought a, a really good way to to get um, to build my network quite quickly, if you like, and, and kind of um, almost introduce myself to um, artists and illustrators, graphic designers in Austin, was to was to reach out and say, you know, tell them about Uberpong and tell them about this project, which um, hadn't really yeah, hadn't been done before. So, you know, very quickly I got 20, 20 artists on board, and they became yeah they became the Kickstarter artists, and now. Um, it's over a year later. We're actually talking to some of the best um, graphic designers in the world who've worked with the biggest brands in the world. Um, and that's no, no dis- I'd like to add, there's no, you know, no disrespect to the to the artists, the artists that we've um, that we've already worked with, and a few of those will be coming over um, with this kind of with a new wave of designs um, and, and becoming part of our design community. But um, but, but yeah, we just. We're just going to be kind of stepping things up and and um, taking to the next level, if you like. Yeah. Okay. So let, let's say I go to your website and I'm looking at the designs and I say I want to customize something. I want it to be really personalized. What would be the steps other than sending my um, image or logo um, through the site? Once you get that logo, what what goes on in order to make a custom Uber Pong paddle? So we've we've got our own custom template um, that is on Adobe Illustrator. So it just means that that we can get any artwork and apply it to that um, and scale it and just make sure it's you know everything's within the print area. Um, we are a, we're pretty close to developing some new software, which will mean that all of our customers and clients can actually go onto our website and you know create their own paddle. Um, design, you know, themselves in, almost instantaneously, um, which will take away the, um, you know, the pain of having to um, either have the software or, you know, the time it takes us to have to to manage that process with customers and clients. What I've found is that it's actually been, in a strange way, it's actually been a great way to to meet our customers and clients because they'll frequently call and they'll say. You know, we haven't got the software. Um, how do we do this? And then it just creates, um, you know, the initial dialogue. And we get a lot of people calling us um, after the panels have been created, um, saying not only that they love the panels, but they actually love the customer ser- service and the the very personal touch as well. So we don't want to lose that <laughs> by by automating the process online, um, certainly. But um, but yeah, we're, we're actually we're actually trying to think of ways that we can actually keep that keep that personal touch. And the um, type of um, rubber and sponge surface, I'm guessing that's um, consistent across all the different paddles, or has has that been something that you've had to, or at least try it on maybe even some of the um, let's say the butterflies or the um, the stegas or some of the different pro brands, or is it pretty much limited to um, the surfaces that you have in house? We've we've actually been approached by some of the big brands, um, and actually, and, and I guess uh, you know the other way around, we've gone to a few brands as well. Um, but just purely and simply because of the the regulations um, for pro play, certainly um, with us printing on the surface, surface it, it almost means that um, yeah, we've had to go our own route um, and come up with our own, our, almost our own surface surface if you like so um, going forward when we when we launch when we almost relaunch the website it's going to be a brand new website I would say in the next couple of months on ibapong.com we will be just focusing on hard bat style at first so just the pips out with no sponge um, just to keep things simple and then we've got other products that we'll be we'll be launching um, over the next year or two uh, we've got we've got all those lined up and and some really very talented uh, industrial designers and uh, yeah, product designers who will be collaborating with to to bring to, to really yeah to bring new products and products that have never been released before. So we're we're very excited about that as well. Well, I know also that you um, had a chance to work with Extra TV, and.
and um, some of the stars kind of jumping on the table in front of a crowd. Um, are there any other events that you've done um, that you'd like to share with our listeners? I mean, the, the launch event we did in in March, when was it, March this year, um, was, um, we called it the Red and Black Rebellion. So, so we thought, you know what, we're trying to, we're trying to be disruptive. We're trying to, to give people an alternative to what is out there at the moment. So we just thought, we came up with the hashtag Red Black Rebel um, and then called the event the Red and Black Rebellion. And it was called that because it was the first event, I think, um, I hope it was the first event um, ever where everybody had to use an Uber Pong paddle. They couldn't use a red and black paddle. So it was just the complete opposite um, of, the, of the existing rules. And, and people loved it because, you know, they, they, yeah, they were all the different designs, different colors. And it was just something different. It was just something um, that caught the attention of local, local media. Um, and following that, um, we got yeah we got some TV exposure as well and and as you know we yeah we got on extra TV um, MTV used um, it uh, featured us on one of the shows as well and I believe we're going to be on VH1 next week as well um, with a couple of designer paddles um, on or after the Red Light Rebellion the most recent event we did was uh, was combining table tennis with fighting video games. Um, you might think that sounds like quite a random combination, but um, we called it Uber Pong. It was going to be called Mortal Pong Bat, um, but we changed it to Uber Pong Bat. And we created our own game where players could just play a regular game to 11, but instead of just you know having a referee and, and them scoring, we actually projected um, some visuals onto, um, onto a big screen by the side of the table and we we took out the the players from um, a video game kind of scene, if you like, and every time a player scored a point, the the health bar of their opponent went down, and we could control that. So that again got people talking because it hadn't again, as far as I'm aware, it hadn't been done like this. And such was the success of this. We've actually been approached by um, some, you know, some big businesses in, in Austin who want us to do this at their venues um, every month. Um, and we're looking at starting to do that next year, um, which means that we're, um, one of our, um, we've got a gaming developer and he's actually, yeah, he's, he's going to be creating um, our own kind of branded um, game that we can use at these events, which is, you know, again, it's, it's uh, we're break, sort of breaking new ground there. and. Um, and excited to see the release of that, yeah. Um, have you thought about, or I'm, I'm guessing, have tried it already, um, doing anything on the table itself on the surface? Since you've gotten the paddles going, we know that there are logos on balls, and that's something that's been done for quite some time. But what about doing anything on the table surface? Well, without giving too much away, <laughs> um, yeah, the, 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 uh, the product team... At, uh, or, or in uh, yeah, at Uber Pong Labs is uh, we've got a few ideas. We're, we're looking into this, and again, we've seen current technology that's out there. We've, we, the key thing with Uber Pong is we, we're a very collaborative business. So instead of just saying you know let's do this, let's be under one roof in one location, we've got collaborators around the world, and we've seen things that exist, and we're trying to yeah, see how we can kind of combine forces and, and do something um, great with these innovators. Um, so that's, yeah, back to your question, definitely, definitely something we're keen to do, and we are researching it. And um, I would say probably in about the next year, we maybe six months to a year, we'll be looking at, um, at testing something out. So so keep your eyes on eberpong.com, yeah, or our Facebook page. Um, you'll just, you'll we'll definitely let you know. have to let let us know first. What trends have you noticed um, prefer in the social table tennis world? Um, we've seen definitely an upsurge in tournament play with the number of full-time clubs, but it really seems like there's just a whole groundswell 
of activity. And I don't know if, if you're finding the same thing in the partners you're working with or if it's kind of out of the Spin New York model of what um, they're doing there with the franchisees. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I, I, I kind of compare, I compare it to the, the, the way that soccer came across the U.S. From, from in, back in the 70s, Pele was playing biggest, you know, greatest player in the history of soccer. And he came across and he brought a, you know, crew of um, international players across and formed, uh, was it the New York Cosmos was the team that was formed. And then the, the Major League Soccer um, founding body was, was, um, was formed as well. Now, that first wave didn't really do it, you know, um, and it really, it really took probably David Beckham um, very recently to, for that second wave to come or happen, and and that, and it really to, to, I would say, hit the mainstream. Now, there's a lot of competition in the states. Don't get me wrong with baseball, American football, basketball, um, and even ice hockey. But I think it, I think Beckham's definitely taken it to that next level. And if you look back at table tennis, it's you know maybe 20 years ago it was. It was being played in basements and garages and so on. And, um, I, 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 you know, it, didn't, it wasn't really penetrating into kind of bars and restaurants and more of a social scene. And I think now is the, I'm, I think it's the second wave, just like the soccer. And I think this, this wave is what's going to really crack it and make this game um, just one of the most played sports in the U.S. I speak to you know, American football fans and sports fans, and they just say, it's ridiculous. They, they don't see how this can be, you know, one of the most played sports in the U.S. Um, but I think it's got even more of a social um, magnetism, if you like, than than soccer because, you know, you've only you don't even have to have a table set up. You can just have a net and put it across any table. It doesn't have to be like a like a pro table. Um, and people can just pick it up and play. And it's just I think it's just such an incredibly easy game to get into. What I'd love to see in the US is is more public tables and outdoor tables and um, government and, and maybe even charity backed um, schemes that allow people to 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 play in you know in outdoor spaces. If you look at I, I, Sean, are you familiar with um, with Ping in England? Yes, I've I've seen some of their national campaigning especially um, as they were leading up to the games in London, but even uh, quite a bit of stuff afterwards. Yeah, so they, I mean, they're, they are lottery, um, they were a lottery funded initiative, and they only started about two years ago, I think it was, in, in a pop up shop in on Carnaby Street in London, and I was lucky enough to be at that very first um, location. And in under, you know, in about two years, it's just snowballed, and there are now I think they put in about 50 tables in every major city in the UK. So there's about 500, 600 uh, tables um, in public in the UK in malls and out, outdoor spaces, which is incredible. So that's what has been a catalyst for the resurgence of the game. Now, yes, table tennis is, uh, was invented in, in England, and maybe they played on that a little bit. I know the, uh, Boris Johnson, the mayor of London, um, <laughs> certainly played, tapped, in, tapped uh, into that um, – you know, the lead up to the Olympics to, to kind of get people excited about it. But I don't see um, any problem with this, with that kind of being replicated over here. There's so many cities and so much space to be able to do this. And certainly in Austin, um, there are so many parks, the weather's great, and there's no excuse. You know, this, is, it, this would be a perfect place to do it. Um, and I know... Um, a lot of places in California or Florida where the weather's great, it would work there as well. So I think that there just need to be, you know, kind of um, initiatives like that set up to really to really capital you know, the popularity of the game in the U.S. And and just and just beyond what I just said there, um, trends, the games is becoming yeah, it's becoming far more social. So bars, I think bars are, bars especially would rely on darts maybe but especially pool and they're, they're realizing that especially in this economy then they need to have flexible space if you've got a pool table it's very expensive it's very heavy that space is essentially killed um with a table tennis table you can bring that in people can play with a beer in one hand for example paddle in the other 
play a quick game, they can have it up for a tournament or an, or an event, they can then fold up the table, wheel it away, and that space that has become vacated, can you know they can have a band playing there. So all of a sudden, the, the venue makes more revenue. So having spoken to a lot of bar owners, um, certainly in Austin, you know it's it's an easy sell, um, and they're really seeing the benefit of, um, of ping pong versus pool. Have, have, living in Austin, have you had a chance to stop by the um, local Austin Table Tennis Club? Do you know what? I'm a little bit embarrassed to say this. Um, last weekend um, was the first time that I went to play. I'd actually been before then to to visit the guys and uh, Marguerite Chung, um, who helps to run it. But I actually went to play for the first time last weekend. So um, it was it was fun. It was fun. They've got about I think they've got about 20 to 30 tables, and they've just invested in some quite a few. I think it's two thousand dollar tables. So They've, they've got a really nice setup there um, yeah, in North Austin. I, yeah, I know they just finished um, an International Table Tennis Federation coaching course there. Um, so they were doing that, yeah. Yeah, they're definitely one of the um, brighter, shining lights um, of these full-time clubs that are going. And I haven't been there myself, but I have relatives in town, so definitely the next time I visit, I'll go check out. But it seems like they've got a wonderful facility. It's standalone, and it's a 24-7 type of outfit. Let me know when you're in Austin because it's a little tricky to find. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, it's in, you've got to have you've got to have the the code to get through a gate, and then it's in a storage kind of uh, public storage facility, and it's yeah. It's I think if you go to, to their find. website, you you can you can request the code. So um, yeah, I think it's like a, a <laughs> secret it. secret handshake kind of type of deal. That's it. Well, yeah, absolutely. Very in keeping with uh, the whole Austin weird uh, tagline yet. Yeah, or slogan. Exactly. It's yeah, it's just almost like a secret, a secret ping pong uh, bunker almost. But um, but yeah, great facility, and um, yeah, I'd love to love to give you a game, you down. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you, David, for um, the time you spent and shared um, your company's successes um, with the fans of USA Table Tennis. We'll definitely bookmark your site and um, hopefully get it up as possibly either picture or image of the day. Um, you've got some quite fascinating paddles. I especially love the skeleton one. Um, I guess it's showing death to the opponent. Um, but it's <laughs> really been a great, great treat to have you on today. And um, any final thoughts that you'd like to share with um, the members of USA Table Tennis? Well, I'd just like to, to thank um, you personally and, and just USA Table Tennis for the support we've had so far because, um, you know, it's, Coming across to to another country and, and starting a business is, is really scary, and and that and that you know it's very much a leap of faith. And the support we've had in the U.S. so far has just been overwhelming, and and certainly from you guys, no exception there. And just yeah, really just wanted to say thanks for the support. Um, really from right from the beginning, you know, when we did the Kickstarter to now, and um, and yeah, and just just hope we can, you know, hope we can kind of. Collaborate in the future and do some cool things. Maybe, maybe, maybe an Uber Pong uh, USA TT event. Absolutely. Well, thank you once again. Um, we'll keep.